afternoon, Rodan. A very, very in-depth uh, look that we've been having at different um, things within the country when it comes to voting. And one of the important ones is leadership, Marie. And it's not just local government leaders that we're looking at, but national leaders. But let's start with the candidates for Johannesburg, one of the major metros that we were looking at. Let's bring them up right now. We had, very interestingly, Herman Mashaba uh, coming out tops in the city of Johannesburg, followed by Umpa Murana, who's the possible candidate for possible. the ANC, and then Umpo Palazzo, very close behind uh, Umpo Murana for the DA. And we were just talking the other day, saying these two could swap at any time, given the close margin that we're at. But as a general sense, leaders matter within these communities, don't they? Leaders matter a real big percentage when it comes to making choices. We have seen that in the run-up to these elections, a lot of people are actually saying that they're not going to vote because they don't have any trust left in political parties or in political leadership. But when we look at these, these were the scores out of 10 that the people in Johannesburg assigned to the different mayoral candidates. Um, very interesting, I think Herman Mushaba probably in the lead because he has been the mayor of Joburg before. And he has, like, um, people know him and they're familiar with him and uh, I think they know more about him than about the other two candidates. Obviously, Mr. Murani is the current mayor, but I don't think his profile was that high in Johannesburg in the run-up to this. So the fact that he was part of the party ANC doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to him as a person? It's about personalities. Mm. It is very, very much about personalities. Same thing when we look at the national leaders a little bit later, you will see an, a leader of a party that operates on a national basis must be able to appeal to all people, not only to the people of his party, but to gain... Um, traction for his own party has to appeal widely and I think this is what we see in Johannesburg with Mr. Mashaba having a broader appeal than his party has. But surely, I mean now you're putting on your political analyst hat here, he's been a little bit controversial in some of his policy standings yes. when it comes to uh, migrants and the like and people are still gravitating uh, towards him. It is not to say that the people in Johannesburg necessarily differ from him okay. when it comes to his standpoint about migrants. Um, if you look at it intellectually, probably the, his standpoint about migrants is a little bit old-fashioned uh, or it is a little bit not the PC thing to do. But I think that there's a lot of South Africans who, who agree with his statement about migrants. Because we've seen it in research where we ask people questions about migrants. And especially the communities that live with migrants, uh, very close to migrants, have issues. Um, the most popular thing is usually that um, they take jobs away. Now, we know it's not necessarily to, we, true. We know that migrants, especially, they start businesses, they provide jobs and all those things. It's just not how the people on the ground um, experience that. So I think we should always think about how put yourself in the other person's shoes and think about people in Joburg who do not have a job, who see other people progressing, and they might agree with Mr. Mashaba's standpoint. Yeah, a very interesting one, and I've been dying to ask you this one about Mpo Palazzo, who's a DA candidate. I've engaged with her on a number of occasions. I think she's a really strong mm. candidate for the city of Johannesburg. But, of course, she's within a party that's been marred by a cloud of controversy over the last few months. Your thoughts on her uh, as a personality and whether or not the DA is perhaps holding her back as a political uh, a weapon against all these things that we've been going through in our metros. I think it will be great for Johannesburg if it has a woman as a mayor. It will say a lot about women's rights. It will say a lot about equality in the city. And it will also say a lot in this era where we have such, such a big... Um, uh, proliferation of violence against women and children. So my personal view, I'm always for the women in politics, 100%. But I do not think Mpopolazzi's profile in the city is high enough. That you see some of the posters, um, Mpopolazzi for mayor, but she hasn't been 
out and about that much. And I think she might not be that well known in the Joburg community yet. Um, I am not sure about the party that she has chosen. I would rather at this st stage not say anything too controversial about any political party, seeing that we're busy voting. But um, I do think that um, she's a strong yeah. leader. She's a strong woman. And um, it might, might be that, yeah. that uh, she needs a position in the city, perhaps not as mayor, perhaps as one of the MECs, yeah. regardless of which party wins yeah. the election. We have to wrap, but I have to ask you if you could just update quickly about the national leaders. You spoke about the personalities that matter in the first wave, which is the inner circle. Sil Ramaphosa was tops in both the first and the third wave. And of course, Julius Malema far behind a John Steenhazen, which I thought was a little bit surprising, given the controversy that we've just spoken about, the DA, uh, the national leaders and their importance in this particular race. Yeah, as I, as I previously said, national leaders need to not only uh, play a role in their own parties, they also need to play a role on a national stage. And we see Mr. Ramaphosa succeeding in that. If you look at his popularity figures, it's definitely a lot higher than what the popularity figures of the ANC is. And again, these are the figures out of 10, uh, like a, an average out of 10 for the particular leader. Um, I agree with you about the issues of controversy, but there were also a lot of controversies, controversies in the EFF. If you look at both John Steenhuisen and Julius Malema, the whole story of BBS Bank um, and other stories that came out about um, petrol and whatever else. I, I can't remember all the stories about that, but I think both the parties, the DA and the EFF, had a lot of controversies with their leaders to deal with. So very interesting insights, and of course you and I are going to be coming back and talking more about this, and obviously the voter turnout and the likelihood of what party is going to be getting what, obviously focusing there uh, on the Ipsos surveys that we've been running over the last few uh, weeks in terms of the voter mood in the country, and of course other things like coalitions and leadership, and a lot more that we'll be bringing you later.